Growl. It's a social deduction game. And normally when I hear those words, social deduction game, I don't get excited. I don't like games like Mafia typically because I feel like it's a lot of guesswork and pointing and long turns and if you get cut out of it or you lose, then you're out 45 minutes on your phone while everyone else is still playing. But games like Bang, which I, I would like and I've played a lot more than Mafia, have some known information, unknown information to make it feel like you're making more strategy-based decisions. Growl fulfills that. It also fulfills the length of time that it takes and the amount of time you're out of the game in a way that I don't think anything else does right now that I like a lot. So it's addressing a few key things that I think are important, as well as production value. This is just fun and it's, you know, it's an extra, but it adds to people wanting to play the game more. So the way you get to enjoy this game is through multiple rounds. You can play one five to 15 minute round and be done for the night. And you know, maybe if people don't like it, that's, that's it for you. But I think most people will play a few rounds because you're on these two teams as humans and werewolves, as I'm sure you would expect. And what you're doing is making 10 second decisions. Everyone's passing around a face-up deck and what you're passing around are the cards that attack other players, turn them into werewolves, or wound them. So, in the beginning of the game, there's one or two original werewolves, and they're trying to infect other people, the humans, to become werewolves or kill them. The humans are trying to attack the werewolves, kill them, and survive. If one human survives, then the humans win. If not, then the werewolves win. But the interesting decision-making comes behind the simple turn structure. You have a face-up deck of cards, and uh, in the middle of the deck is knight cards that you've put in about a third of the way through, two-thirds of the way through, and then finally the, the deck ends with the final knight. And so... Normal gameplay with the regular cards are you're passing it face up. So I get it, I say, I got a bite. I will hand this to someone, I can't hand it to myself. You're bitten. Now they could be turning into a werewolf. And so you hand this over to the next person. So there's some known information already. Oh, I've got a bite card. I think I'll bite them too, to make sure they are the only werewolf out there. And then this guy's got a wound. Oh, well, I'm gonna try and kill some humans, I guess. So wounding you. Gold is great for multiple turns or it's just a save. And so this guy now gets a salve. I'm going to heal my buddy, this human here. Charm. Ooh, I don't, I don't think anyone's a werewolf, but I'll give you a charm and I'll focus on this guy as a werewolf because charms prevent bites, salves prevent wounds. And with this little bit of information, you're passing the deck around and you can see if someone's biting other people, wounding other people, maybe they're a human, maybe they're a werewolf, and you can make interesting, somewhat strategic decisions based on some known and some unknown information. Now, once you get to a knight card, you do what it says. There's some interesting interaction, lots of different knight cards, but there's always the time where you have your, your deck of cards here that you can pass one to the left, one to the right. So maybe I wound this guy and salve this guy. The only time you can bite someone is with your, when you are a wolf. So you'll find out after the first night if there's a wolf next to you and have the opportunity to attack. So it creates this interesting decision making while also giving you the ability to take turns pretty quickly and if you die you flip it over but your team can still win and it's not going to be that long a game because turns take 10 seconds. Maybe there's some debate up to 30 seconds, some finger pointing, but ultimately it's not a very big deck and people make the game interesting by knowing what's happening in at least a little bit. This game is also easily expandable with other cards that have different effects. And it leads to a night of fun where you're attacking each other and there's these coins that come in. So after the first round, whoever the winning teams are gets some coins. You play again at the end of the night, at the end of the night after three, five rounds, whoever has the most coins wins the ultimate, uh, the, the entire game night. So that's some of the reasons why I like Growl. It's got that great production value. Got, got those great decision-making turns that are quick, and if you're out, you're not out very long. 
So I think this is a game I would continue to play as a social deduction party game. You can include a lot of people. And I like Grau. If that's what you're looking for in a, in a party game, you should pick this up. I just feel like it addressed every complaint I had with social deduction games. So that's Grau.